Welcome one and all to Sunny Petra, this Total War Rome 2 siege battle where we'll see Epirus and Boia attack Athens and Swaby. My name is Kander, and hopefully that intro got your blood pumping and hungering for some good old-fashioned Total War. We just saw the Epirus army led by Fight Me, or Willem, which looks fairly standard with the exception of a Rhodian Slinger that could be an interesting pick that could go both ways in this battle. Uh, Boyai will be commanded by myself, and I'm bringing a pretty standard army comp filled with a bunch of rowdy barbarian swordsmen. On the other side of the battlefield, we'll see a uh, Athens army commanded by Joseph, with a core of thorax swords and a couple of cab units that could be interesting. Uh, finally, we see a Swaby army under Baldwin, which consists primarily of lightly armored units with excellent killing potential, but also a vulnerability to arrows if exposed. Feel free to like, share, sub, and all that stuff if you enjoy the content, and to help this video reach all the siege nerds out there. Let's get into the actual battle, and uh, we do see the attackers moving up the last tortoise to knock down uh, the wall next to the tower, after which they'll cross the breach and uh, enter the settlement. This ballista is getting some excellent shots on the Celtic warriors pushing up the tortoise. And they will rack up some kills there if nothing is done about that uh, ballista. We do see it turn now um, because the attackers did react to it by sending over a Celtic Bowman um, to deal with it. Now, uh, the Celtic Bowman is, is being placed in a very uh, exposed position um, and by the looks of it, it is shooting with standard ammo which um, in this case, we'll probably not be able to do anything against that artillery. And uh, we do see towers getting in on the uh, on the bowmen, um, getting some easy kills. And uh, we also see a unit of what looks to be Cretans on the wall that are absolutely slaughtering those poor bowmen standing on the ground outside of the city. Um, that Bowman unit is now officially out of the battle, and uh, uh, although they did make sure the Ballista wasn't shooting uh, Celtic warriors by the Tortoise, uh, they did also lose a uh, Celtic Bowman uh, for, uh, for, for no good reason, and uh, probably a risk that they should not have taken. The giant ballista has started shooting at these thorax swords and bloodsorn that are standing as the front line. And um, we can see a, little, a few more of the uh, defending units right now. Some bloodsorn were lost needlessly on the wall when the tortoise knocked it down. And some bloodsorn were lost to Celtic bowmen. But other than that, it's been mostly the troops that pushed up the tortoises that have been uh, uh, chipped off a little bit. So we have the uh, levies, two levies, uh, and uh, Kel two Celtic warriors that have uh, laid the groundwork for this um, attack. Uh, they've knocked down the walls, and they are now going to be the first to enter the settlement. The troops are uh, 
coming over the breach, are entering the settlement, are throwing Pila, uh, exchanging Pila, and boom, there's an artillery round coming in and cutting through the Bloodsworn and Thorax swords. Uh, we do see them shuffling around in the response to this. More Pila is flying. The Celtic warriors are coming in, getting slaughtered by Pila, but also emptying out all those Pila so that the better troops, more expensive troops, are not going to have to take it. The Illyrian levies are running after the Thorax that seem to be retreating, uh, trying to catch them in the rear, uh, successfully doing so, but probably won't make much of a difference since the Thorax is a much stronger unit. We do see the tower getting neutralized by a Celtic warrior. Uh, it is a lone unit, and um, uh, the other Celtic warrior is looking pretty pretty sad uh, on its own. The Bloodsworn have now overrun the uh, the one Celtic warrior, which means that they're probably going to have free reign into getting into the other one. The defenders have set up uh, trying to um, hold this choke point and this choke point. Uh, they did get one unit stuck there. I don't think... Um, They'll reinforce that line specifically because there is, of course, uh, a free reign to go behind uh, for uh, the attackers. Now, what the attackers are going to want to do is um, go in, grind these uh, front lines down, and then gradually move up these streets. These two streets. Um, this street here is closer to the victory point, which of course is over here. The more advantageous uh, route of attack is going to be where they're going to be able to maybe have choke points where they can alternate archer fire in the back. Um, and uh, as they move up, as the choke points are pushed, further and further back there's going to be more and more opportunity to shoot archers in the backs of uh, defending troops uh, so let's get back in there and uh, see uh, how this um, first engagement is going to go uh, at the walls um, we can see that there is Bloodsworn, Thorax, Thorax under two Bloodsworn and the Thorax Hoplite General is up uh, for general abilities, which I do like seeing. And uh, two Bloodsworn on the wall, just making sure that no troops are going to land and run around and kill archers. This Celtic warrior is taking a lot of Pila and it is neutralizing a tower. But it does not look like it will be able to stay and fight for that long, especially not if the Illyrian Levy breaks, which, by the looks of it, it is doing uh, slowly with a Bloodsworn coming in in the sight of the Celtic Warrior, and uh, that should break that Celtic Warrior and uh, get him out of the uh, battle very early on with only nine kills. Uh, and that tower will be... Uh, yet again in the defender's uh, possession, which means that it will start shooting the attackers uh, with fire arrows. Another Celtic warrior climbing down from the tower, getting ready to get into the breach. Uh, maybe it should have been in already. There it goes, and uh, it starts neutralizing the tower again, just in time. Uh, well, as we see the uh, Bloodsworn uh, run around, creating chaos and uh, get, getting yet another side charge into a poor Celtic warrior unit. There's a sword follower, there's a Celtic, there's two Samnite warriors that are now waiting to get in. Uh, this Celtic warrior is still holding on, still neutralizing the tower, and still taking Pila from the Thorax and uh, Bloodsworn, which means that the Celtic warrior that now enters the breach will be able to stand and Pila without getting anything thrown back at it. And uh, 
It stops, it loads, and it starts chucking that Pila into the Thorax Swords, which is a, it's costing a lot more than this Celtic Warrior, which means it's a great exchange for the attackers in this case. Uh, we see a Bloodstorm coming rushing in to the help of the uh, Thorax and charging into the Samnite Warrior. And uh, we do, in fact, see the Thorax being pulled out and uh, reserved for a later stage of the battle, which uh, which is a good move of the uh, defenders since it did not get a good charge in. The question is, how far back is it going to go? Is it going to go all the way or is it just going to wait to get a better charge? We'll see. The Celtic Warrior uh, that has been neutralizing the tower is now getting into the side of the of the lone Bloodstorm that is currently holding three, four units of the attackers uh, at bay, but it will not be able to hold that for very long. And uh, another lone Bloodstorm by the tower is now getting overrun by sword followers uh, on top of the Celtic warriors that are lingering still uh, by the tower. Uh, so it looks like the defenders are falling back and giving the attackers the initial um, area around the tower. And we do see a sword follower wrapping around and uh, finishing up the Bloodsworn that are now um, getting hammered by arrows from Cretans as well as a, as a final goodbye from this battle. The attackers have now established their first bubble and uh, they will be happy to have done so without losing too many troops, although there have certainly been losses uh, on both sides at this point. Uh, it seems like it's been pretty balanced and uh, uh, no one side has been uh, gaining an advantage just yet. Um, the attackers have lost a Celtic bowman, they've lost a couple of Celtic warriors, they've lost a couple of Illyrian levies. Uh, but we do see the core of the uh, armies coming in and the Sam Knights and Sword Followers along with uh, a couple of more Celtic Warriors that are now going to be moving into the, uh, the second uh, stage of choke points that the defenders have set up. And we, we now see um, artillery shots getting into these uh, streets which can cause some serious issues for these thorax that are high value troops that are very capable of killing but if they're get, getting nuked by artillery they're going to be much less effective and now we see a bunch of pila getting tossed from a samnite and a celtic warrior and pila from the friendly unit uh getting chucked in their backs which is not really what they want um right now uh they're they're popping shield wall to take up some less space to minimize the amount of Pila coming into their backs. Then another Thorax sword moving up, trying to get some Pila off and the Sam Knight that is currently exposing uh, their sides and backs on that right side. And uh, we do indeed see Pila getting chucked into the Sam Knight, which is gonna deter its chances of, of getting a good exchange here. The Samnite is tightening up a little bit in an attempt to not take as many Pila. Uh, it's a good move by the attackers, and uh, now it's chucking its own Pila while barely just getting engaged with the uh, initial Thorax Swords and Shield Wall. Um, on the other side, we do see a Samnite and Illyrian Levy engaging a Bloodsworn and a Thorax, but we now also see the crossfire from the archers, which we were talking about earlier, which will be very helpful for the attackers in this case. Um, they're getting side shots into these Thorax and Bloodsworn, and the Bloodsworn are very vulnerable for these types of uh, situations, and they will break very fast. Uh, thorax Swords won't be able to hold that much longer, but we do see a... Um, sword master coming up from behind that could help them out a little bit we have also engaged on this uh, choke point where we see sword mass or sword followers taking the brunt of this um but we also have blood sword on the wall and under the tower that are currently exposing their backs and getting blasted by celtic bowmen in the backs uh that blood sword unit is probably a goner um, and it's uh, it's a shame uh, for the defenders, um, uh, but probably a, uh, a case of not being able to uh, focus on all the units at once. Uh, yeah, that there we go. It's breaking, and uh, 
Celtic Bowmen are racking up some nice kills there. Um, we do see uh, some cycling charges from the sword followers into the uh, thorax, uh, which should mean that uh, the thorax is gonna it's gonna lose that engagement quite handedly. Um, We see, we see even more shots coming into the Bloodsorn, but now the defenders have reacted. They're throwing the Bloodsorn in, charging into the Sword Followers, who are not getting a counter charge. And this is a good move by the defenders, although there is a ton of Pila being tossed at Thorax and Bloodsorn, uh, getting their full worth of, of two volleys of Pila out. Uh, we have a unit of Cretan archers on the wall that are now setting up to maybe get some, uh, some uh, decent decent angles into these sword followers it should be taken out and uh exchanged by either a celtic or the uh, sword followers standing over here um we did get some counters to the celtic bowmen in the form of a cretan standing uh, in a very good position there that cretan will be able to fire uh, keep firing uh into that choke point in the back so a uh, very uh, good positioning there It can also be countered by these Cretans, though. And uh, we see this choke point has opened up. Uh, we got sword masters that have 40 kills, but they're almost dead. I'm assuming that is from Archer Fire. Uh, Celtic Warriors and Sam Knights have uh, broken through and will continue around. Trying to engage these uh, Bloodstorm, but there is more Bloodstorm coming up. And uh, uh, if the Bloodstorm get a charge into that Thoreo Spear, they're gonna have a very good engagement and it looks like they have although they get encounter charged by a royal pelt test that ultimately is going to do a lot better than that thoreo spear uh, we do have celtic warriors that are coming in into the backs of the bloodstorm which will mean that the uh attacked in the rear debuff is happening which will kill that unit a lot faster but of course the celtic warriors exposed uh in the back also to that one Bloodsworn, and uh, there are no more attacking units that can wrap around there. So both uh, the Celtic Warrior and the Bloodsworn would probably die fairly quickly there. Looks like they're doing pretty well over here too with the Celtic Warriors beating up a Bloodsworn. Sword followers have taken some uh, losses, but they've also killed plenty of good troops. So good exchange from attackers there. Uh, we see defenders are falling back there, Cretans who are up on the wall went down and now are going to fall into the victory point this cretan is still in an excellent position will it be able to get back shots if it wants to from uh, a couple of different positions uh, this sword master is struggling because it is getting shot by royal peltas and by a Thoreos. that has lost a lot of men though because of this blood sword that got in um and uh Another a Berserker unit is coming in, and it's going to break this Sam Knight, most likely. No, they they moved out again. It has been headhunted. It has been frenzied. Where is it going to go? The Celtic Bowmen are shooting it, and uh, now the Cretans are starting to shoot it as well. It's probably not going to last very long. Uh, sending it in in this situation is not the best um use of that we're not gonna get any kills we're gonna get maybe maybe 10 kills maybe 10 kills there so long berserker and it's a shame to see that because the berserker is a very uh, uh capable unit of getting kills uh bloodstorm charging in again at the sam knight the sam knight is not gonna last very long but it doesn't matter because there are plenty of uh, ranged units that will be able to take care of this Bloodsworn uh, once it's exposed again. And we now see a Royal Peltas General being committed in the center choke point. Uh, racked up 35, 36, 37 kills already and lost two of them only against the Thorax Sword. The Peltas will do great. Now the Thorax Sword has been battle rhythm and refreshed. Um, which is a good move by the defenders, but ultimately that's not really gonna matter. Um, 
And the shield wall won't matter much either, because the royal pelt dust, although it is exhausted, has a lot higher attack, melee attack, and uh, will hit most of those. They are doing a good thing here, though. They are placing the thorax in a smaller shield wall position so that the uh, slingers can get shots on this royal pelt dust. And now these Cretans are also shooting, and. Uh, the general finds himself in a very precarious situation. Um, he is right now threatened by archers and slingers from three different directions. And uh, we see these sword followers with barely any kills also getting, getting absolutely murdered right now from different directions as well. Uh, attackers have lost a little bit of the momentum they, uh, they gained. They're pushing still on the victory point, and uh, we see a, a unit of sword followers with a... Oh, it's going to get absolutely slaughtered. It would have been probably better to bring up a Celtic warrior, but those Celtic warriors are going around to uh, get that tower and hopefully get a flank in here as well uh, to open up another choke point for the defenders to uh, commit troops to. These sword followers are now out of the game. They've been peeled to absolute death. But with 110 kills, it's not a waste of a sword followers, and this Pila needed to come out somehow. So, and uh, more Cretan ammo. So it's it's a loss, but it's, a, it's an okay loss. And now we see pikemen coming up in the middle. And uh, we also see sword followers and all of the archers zoning in on these pikemen who are now turning their backs which ultimately is not going to be a great thing for them uh, we have an, a unit of thoreos moving up probably gonna uh, try to hold these sword followers and uh attacking thoreos at bay but uh these pikemen are not gonna see much success here and the slingers that are moving up uh, it's a very aggressive move by the defenders. Speaking of which, Citizen Cav coming in, trying to get some kills on an Osworn that is ultimately doing very well against these Bloodsworn, who may or may not have gotten a, a charge in. If they did not get a charge in, then they're not really going to do any anything against these uh, Osworn. And as we see, the Osworn is racking up kills. It is tired, though, and it is starting... Okay, there we go. A refresh and a battle rhythm on it. Which means it's gonna keep killing. It's gonna keep doing trading very well against these blood sword. Uh, it's time for the defenders to start trying to even out the engagements a little bit. These sword followers here have gone into a pretty good position, whereas the slingers are in a horrible position and are now getting absolutely melted by Cretan archers and Rhodian slingers. And we do see a heavy focus on these slingers in the center and on the pikemen and uh, scaring scaring them away ultimately and uh giving the uh, attackers another chance to uh to continue the push in the center w which they're doing with a sword follower that is currently trying to get into uh Thoreo spears and thorax swords that are uh, waiting for it in the center the thorax swords did get a decent charge into the sword follower but they're very heavily depleted on the sword follower is almost a fresh unit. This Cretan is now getting uh, engaged in that very commanding position by three Cretans uh, while it is uh, returning fire to a Thoreo Spears that is a lot more armored uh, and uh, uh, maybe not the best uh, target for that Cretan archer. That is currently focused by three other Cretans and will struggle in that. Uh, we have a sword follower engaging the a thorax swords and a thoreo spears engaging a thorax swords and uh, we see a lot a lot of attacking troops lining up um waiting for their uh chance to uh start grinding down the thorax swords um ultimately the defenders better reinforce this position otherwise there's going to be free ran into the victory point and we do see the attackers wrapping around with celtic warrior and a uh, sword follower in hopes of up opening up a new flank there is a depleted um, thorax swords waiting for them there making sure they're not going to get passed without a, a little bit of a fight at least the celtic warrior should be able to win that uh, without any issue though and we do see osworn coming up um 
on the uh, right side from the attacker's perspective, uh, having gone through a Bloodstorm without any issue and now linking up with the center road units that um, did kill the, the two depleted units of Thorax. We now see the defenders um, consolidating their troops, uh, a Cretan engaging three Celtic bowmen, and by the looks of it, uh, having great success in doing so as well. It's a Cretan with, that already has a lot of kills uh, and now is racking up even more against these unarmored uh, Celtic bowmen that ultimately aren't going to be a match. Even if there's, there's three of them, uh, they don't have the range or the missile damage to, uh, to be able to do much against this Cretan. And we do see them fall back. Uh, one of them even broke. Uh, so that means that Boya only has two Celtic bowmen left, one of them is looking pretty depleted too. And we also see that the defenders have a Hippeus Lancer set up in a uh, excellent position for uh, for any uh, back charge on these troops that are trying to open up a another flank into the uh, victory point. Celtic warrior is winning against the Thorax Swords, but there's a lot of defending troops coming up. Um, and uh, the Sword Follower is trying to uh, Probe the uh, Hippeus Lancers here a little bit, but that Celtic warrior is not going to last for long against what looks to be uh, a unit of sword masters and a unit of berserkers. Um, uh, so the sword sword follower needs to come back, and it is coming back now um, in order to not leave a open uh, open road to uh, the attackers back. Uh, we do have angry sword masters and. Berserkers that are ultimately being able to cut off this sword follower, in which case the Hippeus Lancers is getting a really good charge in their backs. They do turn around in the last second. It won't make a big difference in the end because they are surrounded. They are surrounded by great units on both sides and they will die a very fast death there. So good move by the defenders. Um, and nibbling off pieces of the attacking armies that are uh, isolated on, on, on either flank. Um, over on the other side, we see uh, two, two Thorax are still alive, now joined by a Thorax Hoplite general in that choke point um, against uh, Sam Knight and a sword follower. Uh, that are backed up by more sword followers and Thraeos. Uh, attackers have opened up yet another flank with a lone sword follower, which uh, will be a little bit isolated yet again. And uh, with a cab unit roaming around, that uh, might not be the best move from the attackers right now. We do see a Osworn engage with uh, Swordmaster General, Osworn popping headhunt and uh, getting a battle rhythm. Uh, popped on it as well, which will give it excellent chance to uh, to break through this uh, Swordmaster General. Uh, Berserkers and Hippeus Lancers have mopped up that Sword Follower, and now they have free range to go into the uh, attacking archers unless the attackers uh, respond to this uh, threat. And we do see the Hippeus Lancers going for it, seeing the opportunity to, to rack up some archer kills and uh, we also see the uh, attackers spotting the threat moving the archers back uh, at least the Celtic bowmen and uh, sending up a sword follower to greet the incoming Hippeus lancers we have uh, two thorax still engaged uh, along with the thorax hoplite joined by a Cretan archer now in melee which will ultimately not be a great uh, exchange for that Cretan. Uh, it has used all of its ammo, so one could argue that you might as well, but um, I think you, you always leave the archers out of melee and let the actual melee infantry handle those engagements. We have the General Osworn engaged with a Thorax Swords, which will, will ultimately be a winning battle for the Osworn. This other Osworn has been uh, caught a little bit in a weird uh, angle uh, is losing against the Swordmaster General, which uh, is to be expected. Same with the Swordmaster unit, absolutely stomping this uh, sword follower. Uh, so attackers are uh, uh, are looking like they're uh, in a bit of a 
in a bit of a bad situation right here because we have Hippias Lancers roaming around. We have also Citizen Cav that has been racking up Archer kills. Uh, whereas the Thoreos have not been able to repel. And now we have a <laughs> Cretan Archer uh, out of ammo but still uh, being part of the battle. Sword Follower is indeed in trouble now as the Hippeus Lancers are wrapping around and are going to be charging into the backs of a, a unit that was already doomed to die, but now will die even quicker. Uh, the reinforcements uh, on that flank are non-existent and uh, the Citizen Cav is also going to be an issue if it, if it is able to uh, break through that, but it looks like the Sand Knights and the Thraos have, are going to be able to stop that.
the battle is over and we're gonna take a look at the uh, results here um, starting with uh, Bowie Eye uh, trading very evenly with 2048 kills and 2028 losses uh, struggling with some troops here with the Celtic warriors that are, were thrown into the battle early on barely had any impact on the battle another Celtic that barely had any impact too that did okay Celtic bowmen did did pretty good except for that one that just got absolutely owned by a Cretan on the wall um, and uh Osworn general uh pretty much wrapped up the battle by getting engaged uh, into exhausted units that towards the end did really well the other Osworn uh did its job but ultimately got caught in a in a, in a very bad situation uh, against a sword master general and was killed ultimately um sword followers did pretty good for the most part some of them were also thrown away like this 19 got absolutely shot to shit by uh, a bunch of archers uh, from their defenders um we got one that's fresh that was barely used another one that got a lot of kills and still had most of the unit left so attackers still had enough troops uh, to make this a comfortable victory uh, from the looks of it but um they struggled more than they probably needed to. Um, and the same could be said about Epirus. Epirus coming in at 1994 kills and 1673 losses, uh, which looking a lot better as far as ratio goes. Um, they lost a lot less men. And look at these archer and slinger kills. 217, uh, 198, 283, and 333 kills from these Rhodian slingers. A very, very dangerous unit if you bring it on attack or defense and get it as set up in long streets where it has free free reign and, and good angles. Athreo Spears did fairly well, some of them, but some of them were not very effective. And uh, it's sad to see these Royal Peltists, including the General, just getting absolutely smashed by archers, uh, getting probably into a advanced positions where they 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 can get peeled off by archer enemy archer units uh, they should have probably been kept back and, and engaged in safer uh, positions but um, the Samnites did do some work um, to kind of make up for it um, but but again the the most capable units on the battlefield were nerfed pretty effectively by the defenders so well done defenders taken out these uh, Peltests and ultimately uh, one of the Osworn before they got too many uh, kills. The Osworn did get some kills already, so... Uh, but as you can see, it only has one uh, Chevron, so it was kills against inferior units. Uh, and uh, the uh, Osworn General did get three Chevrons, which means it, it killed a lot higher, more higher va value units, including Sword Masters, so... Uh, uh, you can see the difference in uh, in the trades they've they've uh, made in this game. Uh, this one Osworn did not trade effectively, whereas the one general one did trade uh, very effectively. Um, Fight me uh, or Willem uh, did do an excellent job with the uh, archers, who also got chevroned up uh, pretty well, meaning that took up good targets, high value targets. Um, and uh, for the defenders, uh, JJJ or Joseph uh, did get uh, a number of kills on uh, his range. So well done, Joseph, with the uh, Cretans. Uh, also caused a lot of issues with these two cav units. Um, the citizen cav got into archers, uh, was a nuisance. Joseph is very happy to use a uh, cav unit be behind the enemy lines. Uh, sniping out targets uh, where he can and then going to hide. Uh, Hippeus Lancers also racked up quite a few kills. They did get into uh, archer or uh, units in the back, uh, get rear charged on a sword master or sword follower, um, and also caused a lot of uh, commotion uh, in the final stages of the battle. Ultimately, they uh, routed with a very healthy amount of horses still there, which means the uh, if they were they, they they wait a little bit too long before they engage them uh, if they would have engaged them earlier they probably would have been able to have more of an impact but as it was it was a little bit hidden off so maybe joseph tried to uh 
hide it completely towards the end of the game and then uh, use it as a decisive uh, maneuver kind of uh, uh, but uh pikes didn't uh, didn't do that much slingers uh, died to uh, Cretans and rhodians uh, being able to nuke the shit out of them uh, thorax were doing pretty good they are struggling against sword followers that they were uh, engaged with most of the time uh, as, as well as sam knights uh, but they did get uh, a fair amount of kills most of them so good job to uh, to joseph uh, defending a very uh, very uh, hard uh, battle here uh, against uh, uh, two capable factions in Boei and Epirus. And then we have Baldwin as Swaby on defense, 1,504 kills, 2,331 losses. Um, didn't do as well with the archers as the other three players. Uh, did do an excellent job with the general. You see two chevrons who took out high value targets in the form of uh, the Oathsworn for the Boei. One of the berserkers did get into um, a lot of units too. A uh, Celtic warrior and a sword follower uh, paid the price there, but one of them was, was also shot to shit by Celtic bowmen and didn't get any kills, barely 10 of them. Uh, same could be said about one blood sworn got shot up on the wall uh, before it even got engaged. Uh, and the other blood sworn did, like, one one did okay, but the other ones were not really uh, able to get much of a, make much of an impact into this battle. Uh, most likely because they were shot by archers. Uh, there's another one that did okay, 112. Uh, they don't cost a lot, the Bloodstorm, but they are a very capable unit if you can avoid getting shot, which is a hard ask. Yeah. And uh, another sword follower or sword master that did uh, pretty good here with one chevron, so it got into some good troops too. Uh, and then one that, of course, uh, did not get the impact that you would expect. Uh, so. Uh, pretty close battle, uh, all things considered. If if the defenders would have held the walls, I think they would have uh, had a higher chance of winning this battle. Ultimately, they did, they did fall back, and they did end up getting pretty nice positions on their archers, uh, which is which is a, a valid strategy uh, to, to to have a strategic fallback in order to set up side shots and back shots. But uh, as it were, they also. Uh, made space for the enemy archers and slingers who had a devastating uh, impact on this battle um, so yeah that's it for this battle and uh, I hope uh, I hope it was helpful I hope it was entertaining and um, if you uh, did like it go ahead and push that thumbs up thingy and uh, if you want more of this then feel free to subscribe um, because uh, there will be more of this coming up. All right. Later, everyone.